the Miss North Journal is here. Hello and welcome to the Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. The journal I will use to talk all about Marianne North has been bound and is ready to be worked on. I'm really excited. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And I just wanted to answer a few questions. So this has been made using felting techniques with a needle, needle, needle felting, a technique I had no clue on how to use or do uh, until a week ago when I shrunk my husband's jumper and decided that I needed to use that as a soft cover for my journal for the December daily prompts that we're doing for Defemeremba. And... I just wanted to throw something together so that we could get that up and running, put the December Daily Ephemera in there, have a nice time and that be that. But when I sat down to it, when I switched off the camera, when I got into my quiet space, <laughs> this happened. And I will be putting in the ephemera that I make this month and I'll be weaving it into the story as best I can. So I just wanted to answer a question here on the needle felting. I'll bring this back in a moment. Uh, this is a commercially bought piece of felt and a few of you have asked whether you could use this felt. So I have got a big pack of felt that I have bought for you know, a one time only project never to be used again. And so if you've got any scraps of felt, I just wanted to quickly show you how I've accomplished that um, effect, which I found incredibly straightforward with just one single felting needle. I found that easier than using the three pronged tool that I found. So when I was putting in my curves, I have done that to tether down the curves at the points where I want it to curve. If I didn't, I found that it was going off straight. So for a number of you who are digging out your needle felting tool on the back of watching what I've been doing, this is as simple as it gets. Just get your fingers out of the way. And once you get the knack of it, well, there isn't really a knack. It's just up and down. And there we go. That's it. That's as complicated as it gets. So just for the curve, tether the curves down first. There you go. That was a natural wool. And you can cut the ends off. And you can punch it in as many times as you want to secure it or you could then now run a sewing machine top stitch over it uh, in decorative stitch if you so wish so that was that's that the other thing is you can also use yarn any old yarn that you've got you don't need so this is a synthetic yarn just a I don't know what it is really what's your uh, acrylic isn't it it's made of acrylic um, so if we want to try and use that just in its um, raw form I haven't haven't unpicked it I'm just it's a bit dangerous it does feel like Russian roulette where you could easily hurt yourself and I did three times but there's nothing this one it just wants a few more punches But there you go, you can use normal wool yarn as well. Any anything, any any fluffy wool like substance so that you can get see what you can find in nature. Fibres in nature will probably do that. They are. So build it up. And that's that. So that's that. So that was fun. And then you just take some scissors. Maybe you want to cut it a little better than that with a cutting mat or something. Sort of a textured tag, isn't it? You can cut it in half. Let's, should we cut it? Let's cut it. Well, 
what have we got now? There we are. Some embellishments of some description. I think I would run the sew machine over those a bit more. And here they are, back from the sewing machine. So that was just a very quick way of showing you how to attach wool to felt that you may or may not have in your crafting supplies. So that little bit of thread got caught up there, but you can see I've just sewn through to attach it on and give it a bit more texture. Let's bring them up. So a little bit of extra impromptu textured ideas for ephemera. And I think in one of the prompts here towards the back or the end, um, we've got fabric page tab. So I think these could be or could form page tabs and um, they could work like that or just a fix onto the side there and then that be the fun bit that hangs out. So I may have done number 19, <laughs> in which case we can have fun with something else on that day. But there we go, that was just a that was just a general idea. The other the other thing you could do is get some old scruffy scraps and um, this is where it's quite a nice idea not to shy away from the grunge because if you are making grunge papers then you can give yourself a background for something interesting and ultimately make a quite artistic card particularly when you back it on something plain and you'll see that that instantly very quick little idea can become quite artistic with the different textures and you could sew that onto this back or you could glue it on and there could be um, a very nice little greeting card or a tag or something. So th that was another little ephemera idea and a very quick one of how to use up your felt scraps if you have such a thing in your stash and just how you might be able to use some of these grungy scraps that we can sometimes end up with when the dyeing or the tea staining goes a little bit more stronger than we might have liked. I've ended up with some very grungy papers by accident really where they've got torn and then they've dried or they've been overbaked in the oven, things like that. But yes, you could you could create some quite interesting ideas. So there we go, that was that. So this was the bumblebee card which is the ticket that we need to do and I'm going to do two today so this is for day five and day six I'm rolling it in so we'll do the ticket and we'll do the bingo card okay so I'm just going to have a play and see what happens I'm just taking some packaging card and having a look at this so lay down some glue and just have a little collage here. Start doing a little layering up here of scraps that we can see. Um, brown things, anything texturized. Just get some variation of colour here. Just get into my little story mode of Marianne North. So we're having a look at Marianne North in this new journal. We're also going to have a look at the journal in a minute. So we'll get the ephemera done and then I'll start sticking things in. And I feel when I've got the book open, then that's really when the story begins. But I'll give you an overview of Marianne North so we know where we're what we're talking about. So the period in which the main focus will be is when she when she was a lot older she was middle-aged and that would have been in 18 
1869, 1870 and beyond. That is when she did her most prolific work. She was active and she was a painter, but she wasn't always a painter. So let's hear a little bit so about... I've said in the last video that she comes from Hastings. Well, that's in East Sussex on the south coast of England. She was um, one of three children and she was the youngest. Her father favoured her and called her Pop and her mother, from what we gather or what we know, is that her mother had a very difficult pregnancy. She was extremely unwell when she was carrying her third child, Pop, and they thought that the child would not be born alive because the pregnancy had been so bad and the mother had been so poorly. Well, these are well-to-do people. So her mother and her father, the, the mother's father, so Marianne North's grandfather on her mother's side, was a member of Parliament. So he was, uh, I think they were from Herefordshire, the, the mother's side. And then the father, Marianne North's father, um, was also a member of Parliament for Hastings. And so these are learned people. They have studied uh, all sorts and they are members of the government and the Parliament. And they would go up to London regularly and have to do all the voting and meetings and, you know, give their opinions on things. Well, her father, uh, Frederick North was very well liked and very well respected. He had a lot of friends and friends in high places, but interesting friends. He befriended outside of his working life poets and writers and painters and artists and influential people around the world. So he was really interesting and he was well-travelled and that is one of the reasons why Marianne North gets the travel bug later in life because she's already done it with her family because they do travel around to Europe when she's younger. So just as an overview, just to get us in the mood, Marianne North in her lifetime painted over 1,000 pictures that were all utterly breathtaking. She had no education because women of that, uh, women in that time were not educated as well as the men. Even though they did have governesses coming to the house, it was never really a formal education for her. But she could read and she was taught to read by her father. And therefore she did have a bit of a passion for books and she would learn self-taught. She was self-taught. She started out um, with a bit of an obsessive personality when it came to anything creative and her first passion was music. She absolutely adored music and learnt the piano and sang and she was apparently very good. Although her mother didn't care for anything artistic and she didn't care for any singing in the house. However... Her father was a little bit deaf and so he didn't mind too much and she was allowed to carry on singing. Well, this might work out. OK, so I'm just going to... Now I've got my B, I'm just going to carry on. So how did she become this fearless pioneer? Well, Marianne North, in her lifetime, she travelled to 17 countries over a 15-year period. That is an incredible claim to fame when you're thinking that the time frame in which she was doing it was in the 1860s, when travel was very, very difficult. And if you were travelling as a woman, that was even more difficult and more risky business. So it was ex exceptional that she would have even been able to have accomplished that. So before we get on to how on earth she managed any of this, let's just go back in time and see what was going on for Marion in her early years. 
So we know she hasn't got a very strong education. We know she comes from a wealthy home. She lives in Hastings, which is near the sea. And they also have um, the family home with her grandparents up in Hereford. So she travels there and they spend a long time uh, staying with family. And she's she is surrounded by learned people that have important positions within the government uh, in London and places like that. She is surrounded by influential people. We also know that her father is a very keen botanist and gardener. It's his passion, as is many, many people of that class and stature were interested in botany and all sorts of learning all sorts of teachings on plants and orchids and things like that. Marianne North does not really have a very strong relationship with her mother. And there's two reasons for that. Um, the mother has difficulty perhaps bonding with Marianne because maybe she, because of the start in life was very difficult for her, traumatic pregnancy, perhaps childbirth. Uh, we're not sure, but there it, 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 it has been mentioned that there's possible jealousy um, because of her father's affection for her. They just were kindred spirits. They saw, saw eye to eye and maybe that was something that the mother just didn't, didn't like and that was made for a difficult relationship all round. Um, also... What we are told is that Marianne's mother, according to Marianne, was not well educated. She was not a well educated woman. Well, she couldn't have been because they weren't. Um, but I think what is also meant is that she didn't have a particular desire to learn. And that was an issue for Marianne. She wanted. She wanted to know lots herself. She sought out information. She was wanting to be a wealth of knowledge and she found it very frustrating. Um, and then, you know, because her mother wasn't, she couldn't understand why her mother wasn't. Why? why did her mother not pursue that or want to pursue that? So she found her mother frustrating and also too interested in fashion and popular current affairs and sort of, for not to be too rude about it, but more like an airhead, she felt that, her, that she didn't like that in women. She didn't want to be that woman. She didn't want to be the woman that got tied down, married and expected to have the children. And she, she, basically, she didn't want to become her mother. She wanted to rebel against that straight away. And she did, so she did the music and she did the singing and then she also fell in love with watercolour painting and she started to learn how to do that. And she would paint the flowers in her father's garden and that's sort of how that passion started and she was very good at it So because she'd been doing it for such a long time. So she did, it was decided that she wasn't educated enough. Perhaps Marianne said that herself. And so therefore she was sent to school, which is a little bit unheard of in that day and age. She was sent to school. But she didn't like it. She really, really rebelled against that as well. So that wasn't going to work out for her at all. <laughs> but what we do know is that throughout her life, Marianne kept diaries. She kept a journal. She did keep a record of her life and she would write in this diary, this account of when her mother became sick and she described the whole episode as dreary and it was, you know, it's just horrible. But she didn't make any gushing reference to her mother being sick towards the end and she did lose her mum her she did lose her mother quite 
when she was quite young. She was 25 when her mother died. Um, but because they didn't have the best of relationships, it was something that was not really talked about in her diary. It wasn't mentioned at all, really. It just was a fleeting thing about how the weeks leading up to her mother passing had been dreary, so that's just all she said. The, the other thing that happened is her mother made her promise that she wouldn't leave her father's side, it, meaning she would look after the father when when she was gone, and to which Marianne promised because that was nothing for her to worry about. She very much loved her father, would be described as daddy's girl in this day and age, and they had a very fond and very a very close friendship. So she describes her father as her best friend, her teacher, and would be the only person that she would feel comfortable talking to and telling her secrets to. So he he was her special person her confidant and she had a very strong relationship with her dad where she didn't have that with her mother and perhaps you know the mum was a bit jealous of that relationship because what mother wouldn't you'd obviously want to be very much involved in your children's life and if they favor one parent over the other that's going to be difficult isn't it in any in any point in history so just focus in a second on this. So we've got a very scrappy collage here of what could be a tag. And now just to turn it into a ticket, uh, loosely based upon a ticket idea, we're going to need a hole punch and I will be using a three quarter inch punch. And I'm just putting it in and I'm just taking off the little corner there, just rounding it to give me a ticket edge. Like that. And then I come round and do the same there. I don't want to make it too big. Just enough. And I'm just going to mark my middle. Oh. I think I'm going through fabric. Oh, I didn't think that one through. Whoopsie. Come in just slightly and then punch that out. And that, you can see, is the shape of the ticket. So I think I should have covered this and backed it before punching it out but I think these are actually going to be stuck down and become tucks. Okay I'm just going to back this, I'm going to take an, a wider piece, some music paper on here, I'm going to just roughly tear it out. So yeah Marianne loved music and she would play and she was actually quite good she had concerts and she played professionally and she played for their guests and she played oh she had um music teachers music tuition and the whole thing was quite a, a pastime for her so i think i would like to bring in the music paper to reflect that part of her life. Not that we're going to see a great deal of it. Yeah, so Marianne's mother had made her promise to look after her dad. Well, that's a big, bold statement, isn't it, when you're a young woman and you're 25 you're quite old there really in that in that time frame to not be having suitors or to be introduced to men for potential husband material you know so 
it was always documented that that was fine by Marion. She did not want to get married. Want to become one of these drawing room women, where they had to be subservient to their husband and ultimately not pursue an interesting life. So there was something there very early on. And I think the music would have been an escapism for her. It would have set her free. She certainly learnt it with uh, constant practice. I've got here walnut stain. So using walnut stain, I'm just going around my edges to darken those lines. I've got my acrylic block there. I'm just going to... Let's try. I'll try a bit of vintage photo in an oxide. Let's see what that does. Just have a shot of water. I don't think this is going to be uh, light enough. I'm now thinking I should have gone for my... weathered wood but but we'll put this on anyway that's fine I want to do a similar thing on here what's this one weathered wood oxide just um, get that on there so that looks a little bit worn and water damaged over the years Put a bit more on here so that we've got that on there as well. And then to represent the gardening, I will bring in um, some flowers. Book page, these are from, um, I've been sent these actually, so that's quite nice. So I haven't had to cut them up myself. Okay, so I've got, I've got an arrangement here that I'm starting to like. I've got my fussy cuts here and I'm going to ink around, but I think I will go for a bit of this weathered wood and just bring in that grey because I'd like to darken down some of the white of the book page. So the ticket is interesting. I know we've been asked to do that for this prompt, but the ticket would have been important because tickets were the key to going places. And the family, before the mother died, uh, they did spend a lot of time in Europe, and so travel would have been part of their uh, culture, part of their family life. And they spent up to several, oh, you know, a long time, perhaps because of... Um, her father working for the government, maybe being an ambassador, uh, he would have stayed in places like Germany. And their story starts, surprisingly enough, very fitting for the Defemer Ember, but their story starts in Germany and it starts in Vienna, in <laughs> Austria. And that is where they went to, uh, to live for some time uh, because of the father's work. So I thought that that was really fun to have had that as the start of the story in the very early years when they were together as a family. They were actually living in Vienna in Austria. And that is, of course, where Barbara from 49 Dragonflies comes from, one of the coke co-hosts for Defemeremba, along with Luisa Heinzels, who's also from Germany. So that is lovely. I'm really pleased that that is part of the story. And here we're adding the B for the ticket, which is the prompt. So I've got the flowers from the flower garden. I've got her musical background. I've got a bee, which is our natural pollinator across you know, the world, without the bees we're in trouble. And I've got the number of the ticket, so, which was the prompt for number five. So the number five prompt is number or sentiment and ticket. And this is going to be my entry. So I shall just glue that down. 
and for that I'm going to use an art glitter glue. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I'm going to use the art glitter glue on these pieces here. I think the bees will definitely like these flowers, so that's good. It's nice when it seems to work as a composition. And nice to bring in the grungy scraps. So yeah, it's worth doing grungy scraps because they do just add a wonderful backdrop when you're wanting a different colour palette to lights all the nice time. to be able to show you a dark colour palette, so um, quite fun to do and just show that. You know, we can still have our flowers and things popping off the page but have the background as well. And then that can come down. And then the bee, which is quite delicate with its little legs and feelers. So I'm just going to be quite careful gluing him down. OK, and then finally I'm going to turn him over. I'm going to stick down top and bottom. And then this is a, a belly band and that could either be stuck down as a tuck with a belly band on top or that be a double belly band who knows let's see we'll have a look in a minute how it's going to look but that's the plan so just going to put enough glue along the top there and along the bottom and then that will come and live down here and we have got number up there uh, and it just I like the idea it says my life won't my life won't what what won't your life be my life won't be boring I think we'll find <laughs> so there we go that is the that is the number five prompt and then I'm going to quickly put together another one for the bingo for today's prompt which is the bingo card and I think I've been so good and I've been so poorly, but I'm feeling much better now that I think I can possibly open day one <laughs> of my advent calendar and um, see if I can have a little sneaky chocolate. So uh, I was given this by my family. Oh, look, it's a leaf. That's sweet. That's really sweet. So I'm going to have that dark chocolate. Mm -mm. <laughs> Lovely. Right, what's next? Today is an elephant. I've cut him out already. Look, haven't done it. Haven't done that bit. Oh, that was lovely. Ooh. Right, I like a bit of dark chocolate now and again. Right now, what we've we been doing? We've been doing scraps. We've been doing the pretty grunge scraps, and I did like this one. Look at this. So this, I think this is very beautiful. I think it's old, it's vintage, it's been baked around the edge, so it's got a bit of burnt. I think that's great. And then this is the elephant. I just love the way he sits there. Um, one of the places where Marianne North travels to, one of the places that she absolutely adores, is India. I'm hoping this is an Indian elephant. We know Marianne North travelled to India. We know she had a fantastic time. So I think that this could be a piece of ephemera to highlight that particular part of the story when we come to it. And I'm going to put my... I think this is an Indian elephant. Its ears look the right size. So, so I'm going... Because I think you tell that, don't you? The African elephants have the larger ears. Oh, I'm not sure. You tell me. Um, so, yes... Uh, subscribers in South Africa what elephant have I got here if I've got an African one it'll go on the African page it makes no difference because she went to both places um okay so for my ticket no what am I doing I'm do so for my bingo card idea I have got some packaging paper and I found this stamp which is a tracker sort of a it's um you know a planner stamp for the month where you can put the date on and i just thought if i can stamp the squares um you know a rough image just not anything too bold let's hope not oh that's oh okay i'll tear those bits off i thought i'd got right, we don't we don't want the month we just want a suggestion of a bingo 
card, so I'm tearing that out. So I've got that, and then I've got some numbers here, and I'm going to put some numbers on the bingo card. Put 42, and then I think I might be able to get 20. Um, have that up there. Just about. Give, just give another bingo, bingo idea there. And then I think that could slot behind the elephant. Or maybe I didn't need that number. There we go. And the today's prompt was bingo and a feather. So I've got to sort of bring in a feather. So I'm going to ink this one. So we didn't they didn't have bingo, they had lotto. I like that. And then a feather. Right, I don't have a real feather. I haven't been out looking for a real feather. I probably have a fluffy feather somewhere in my stash, but who knows where, I can't think. Uh, but what I do have is this very lovely uh, die cut. I'm gonna pull one. this together really quickly. I'm just going to ink the feather. It's just so fragile that I think if I emboss it, it'll strengthen it up a little bit with the coating from the embossing powder, so. That's the intention, but I just want to get this base colour on here of this bright, vibrant blue, just because that, I think, is quite fun. And uh, you often see the elephants have feathers, don't they, in their headdresses when they dress them up. So I'm hoping that this will, if I'm quick enough... I've got an embossing ink here called Salvage Bettina. I'm going to see if that will just stick to that ink. Let's hope... I was quick enough there. That seems to have worked. I'll cut this bit out because it's noisy. Okay, so using art glitter glue, I'm just going to glue this down. I think we're going to have a bit poking out the top, that's okay. Just sneaking in another number two there, just because I'm just going to put that little extra number there. Just want to see something peeping out so it's uh, a bit more authentic. And then that's how we're looking there. Then we've got this beautiful, shiny, and quite fabulous feather. And I can either have it here or I can have it poking out the top but that is a very fragile bit, so it might be best that that is stuck to a page. But for that, I would need to explore the page. So it's going to look like that. It's really kind of cool. And then I can decide if I'm going to stick that down further onto a page when we come to it. So there we go. There's a pile of ephemera now all waiting to go in this journal. So let's have a very quick whistle-stop tour, and then the next video will be all about sticking in the ephemera and starting the stories off again so here we have it very quick so we've got a front pocket and a place to have things stuck or put I've got some fibred paper here which is waxed so we'll talk about that another time first page nice and inked and I'm going to uh, first first page for lovely ink effect on there and that is a really lovely blue we've got this wibbly wobbly wonky sewing and I actually really love it and over here is where the first um, ephemera is going to go in there and that's going to be the artist and this is all to do with watercolour so she is a watercolour artist to begin with and then this is all about her journey of how she starts with one medium and then ends up with another. So that's that. Uh, we could 
have this on the front or perhaps it could even come and be here or it could even be here but that's like that's quite nice isn't it so that could even strengthen that page and then this is a belly band it's just that this page isn't very strong but that's not a problem because I could strengthen it up with some other ephemera going here so for now I think that this, because it is the start of the story, I'm going to add it in here and then we'll sort out what we're going to do as we get into it. So we've seen that. I've got a feeling that I'd like a picture of Marianne North there and then we'll have the bottles and that there. This tells, the, this tells another story, the playing cards, so that's fine. And then this starts to tell a story as well. But I'm thinking I would quite like to bring in maybe the pockets could come and live here. We could have the elephant stuck here. Lots to choose from. It's exciting, isn't it? Uh, maybe this could come and just be a lovely embellishment here. But then I'd lose... I'd lose that. Fun finds. I don't know. And then this is some Japanese style. <laughs> oh, look. That's very beautiful. Not sure about that. Maybe come and spice up this bit here. That's I quite like that. Got to cut that open, that pocket. That's nice there. Could go anywhere really. It's gonna be nice anywhere. <laughs> um no, yes. I mean they look lovely. These pages are just great because they set the ephemera off really nicely. It's nice on that as well. This feels more like we're in India over here. That's beautiful. Right, okay, well I think that this is going to evolve. And we'll just have to I love that. I love that. Oh, that's nice. Gosh, I can't choose. Though this, there's going to be something here. This is too plain. That says South America, so that's not quite right. And then we've got this here with the penguin. So that wants to be stuck down and sorted out. Oh, that's nice on the black and white. That's lovely there. Hmm, very difficult. just looks great everywhere <laughs> it just looks lovely so yes this is the journal I love that oh I really like that how about there oh wow there we go I'm not sure where to put it but um, it's going to look fantastic wherever it ends up so I think what we'll do is we will not rush it now. Um, I'm going to tuck it in there because that feels like something's going on there for India, but I'm not sure, so we don't know. And then we've got these pockets which are, are going to come and live somewhere here, I believe. And that was quite a nice idea that we liked, so 
we could have that as long as we can get into them. Or maybe they go like this. That's a good idea. I probably want to embellish that one as well then. And then if they're stuck down, they can flip over and you can get into them. That would be good. Oh, I like that idea. Right, so they, that's all to do. So that can live there. And then I've got these nice pieces as well. So I am not going to finish it today like that because we have had a lovely story and a chat and I will work on it and um, as the story unfolds we're missing one of those little pieces I'll find it and I'll put it in there but there we go guys so thank you so much for watching and listening to all of that I don't want to go on any longer uh, because we'll save it for the next one we can start putting things together and then we can do the prompt which is number seven and we'll work out what that one is is a handwritten memory a uh, loaded tag okay so we're doing a tag all right so we'll do that next time and then we'll get going in and listen to more stories of marion so thank you very much for watching and above everything else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now